Hi there. So I wanted to um, start giving you guys some instructions on um, project two. Um, you've had two classes in graphic design thus far. Um, and so this is really the, the course where we start focusing on Photoshop and InDesign. Um, most of you, um, if not all of you, will have had some experience in InDesign. But if you haven't, um, this first video will kind of give you the basics. And then we're going to get into the specifics of designing for um, for magazines, um, which I know, again, is something that you guys are not spending a lot of time with. If you are not, you should go directly to Barnes and Noble and kind of spend an hour or two just looking through magazines so you get a sense of what the format looks like. Most In most instances, the things that you're being asked to, to design for, you've had some experience with. So if you haven't had experience with that format, you should, you know, go and experience it in reality. Um, if it's a magazine or a book or a postcard, you should spend some time with it. So one of the things that I always like to do when it comes to these requirements um, is I encourage you um, to do a screen capture. So on a Mac, it is Command Shift and 4 and it'll give you those crosshairs. That way, um, I always have those, oops, that's not what I wanted, those guidelines over here to my, um, uh, on my desktop for me. And so, you know, I can always uh, open them up, um, you know, and, and grab it if I don't want to go back in. Um, it's not a bad idea to print this off as well. So again, you have physical copies. You can see that your sizes are here um, and it's giving you per page and then per spread. So spreads are two pages side by side. So you can see that you're doing three spreads and then a one spread, which is an ad design and a cover. Um, and so we're going to jump into InDesign at the all right, so when we open an InDesign document, um, you're going to get this window come, coming up. Um, and then I'm going to go to File, down to New, Document, uh, or Command N. Again, you should start learning those key commands. It's really important that you do a couple of things. Number one, that you indicate inches. Um, it's also not a bad idea for you to come into your preferences. Um, before we go into this and um, select units and increments because the last thing you want to do is be in pixels or points. So you can see that I'm in inches and the way that I got that is I went to InDesign down to preferences over to units and increments. So that's going to give us that. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Um, and your document is um, has a height of 10.3 3 10 and three quarters so that's 10.75 and then your width is going to be nine now um, this is not a bad idea to start like thinking about pages you always have an extra page um, when creating InDesign documents because um, it doesn't create a left page for spreads when it starts. So we could go to pages and say seven pages because that'll give us that one extra. And oh, we actually need eight because you have three spreads and then you have the spreads that are the cover and the back. So that'll give us a total of eight. Um, and um, these are presets. I heavily encourage you to stay away from presets. So I'm going to encourage you to go zero, 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 and zero. And the reason why I encourage you not to use presets, especially when you're new to this, is because it's great for you to kind of figure out the page as it, it you know, kind of comes together. So I'm going to hit create.
So as I said, remember this first page uh, is going to be a right hand page. And so we actually we actually need one more page, which is great because then I can show you how to add that one more page. I can come down here um, and that gives us our total of eight or I could come up here and insert pages. So this is the really, 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 really important part of InDesign is understanding uh, a parent page versus um, uh, these pages that we're actually designing for. So a parent page is where you're going to put all of your guidelines. So for example, some of the basics of um, putting a page together are, you know, at least a half an inch on the sides and the top. So let's start there. And this is specific to magazines. Now, this is called the gutter. Interestingly enough, the space between two columns is also considered a gutter. Um, but the inside where your two pages meet um, is handled a little differently. And it really depends on a lot of things. It depends on the weight of your paper and if it's perfect bound or saddle stitch. So saddle stitch is when they use a stapler. So that's typical for magazines that are um, quick, but it's also really typical for magazines to be um, to be uh, glued as well, which is the the um, perfect binding. So one of the things that I would do is, you know, if you're doing a saddle stitch and it's thin paper, half an inch. Most of us are going to be doing perfect bind. So in in a situation where you are do, doing perfect bind or perfect bound, you're going to give a three quarters of an inch. The reason why is because the paper rigidity on something that's stapled um, is very, very flexible. Um, so we're going to have those three quarters on the inside. Now the bat bottom is treated differently as well. So again, we have half an inch, half an inch, three quarters, three quarters. And these are not hard and fast rules, but they are pretty, pretty traditional rules. So the bottom also has um, a bigger bottom as well because the amount of visual weight um, that happens here um, from the images and the text makes this space feel smaller. So that's one of the reasons why we give ourselves a little bit more space at the bottom. So um, when you are dealing with um, designing a magazine cover, um, and let's just pull those guys in here now. So this, you're, you're going to be putting an ad and a cover together, right? So this is a cover. You have to think about where you're placing those. Um, and I'm going to scale these so that we can look at them, but also our page. So when you're designing your, your ad should go here and your cover should go here. I know it seems like the, the, uh, cover should be here because we think of it as the first page. But if you lay, for example, a book um, on its uh, stomach, opened wide with the back panel, you'll notice where the back panel is and where the cover is. So that's how we lay things out. Um, so your ad's going to be here and your cover is going to be here. So um, that's going to give us kind of our basis. Now remember, we went up to a parent, right? So um, the reason why we did that is because we created these guidelines um, up here. And you can see that all of these pages now have A on them. And so uh, that is our A parent.
Now, to design the interior of a book, um, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, to design the interior of a book, let's make another, you know, uh, master page. And we're going to come down here and we're going to um, insert pages. And we are going to, actually, that's not going to allow us to insert masters. Okay, parent pages. They used to be called masters, so you'll hear me call them masters a lot. I'm going to shorten my window so you can see this. So if I come down here to parent pages and I'm going to load parent pages. Um, all right, so they've moved this panel around. So we actually need to click up here. Um, I was clicked down here, and so what happens is, oh, I can get a new parent from, from there. So we're gonna, I'm going to add a new parent. I'm going to call it B. I could actually call it interior pages, um, but we'll just call it B. It doesn't actually allow me to do um, long uh, things. Um, so we're going to click OK. And so I can create a whole different setup for my interior pages, right? Because those guys are going to have um, a whole different thing going on. They're going to have um, multi-column. Um, and the reality is, is if you work for a magazine, they're going to have pre-made templates and you're going to just grab one and then you're going to have all these set up for yourself. Um, so that's nice. It's not like every time you start designing for a magazine, that you're going to have to start this from scratch. So we're going to do the same thing. Three quarters of an inch on the interior, half an inch on the outsides and the top. And as we know, we give ourselves a slightly bigger bottom with three quarters of an inch. Now this is where the fun stuff comes in. Because all of your magazines, could have different guides depending on the pages. So for example, your table of contents might have a different um, set of situations. Um, but we're going to be doing interior pages. So we're going to do a two column interior page. Um, but you could have a three column. Um, that would not be uncommon in a magazine. So we have to do some math here. Um, and so that requires that we get this measurement. So I'm going to come over here and I can see that I have seven and three quarters. So let's mark that down seven and three quarters. So um, if I have two columns, a quarter of an inch is going to be right into um, my gutter. So that's, that means that I am left with seven and a half, which means that each of my columns is going to be, um, so we have to divide um, seven and a half. Sorry, so I had to um, stop so my dog could bark at the mailman. All right, so this uh, this means that we have seven and a half to divide in half. Um, and so sometimes it's easier to um, show this kind of measurement in fractions. So 7.5. Um, and so if you divide that, what you're going to end up, if you divide that by two, is you're going to end up with 3.75. 3.75 is three quarters of an inch. Three and three quarters. All right, so the way that we're going to make that happen is we're going to move our zero point and we're going to do that by just dropping it right there. And so I'm going to hit three and three quarters. And then I'm going to have a quarter of an inch in between. And then um, I am going to move that zero point again. And then I can do three and three quarters. And if we measure this over here, we're going to see that it's three and three quarters. So perfect. Now, the last thing I like to do 
is I kind of, you know, in any situation, like to give myself like a midpoint. Um, you know, I like one third, two thirds. And so I'm going to just give myself this as a thing that I'm going to play with throughout my design, right? Um, <clears throat> so if you're doing a different kind of design, so many of you may choose to play with a grid that's modular, um, we're going to do something else. So let's make another parent and kind of figure that out. Uh, new parent. So we're just going to go with C. So again, we're going to do what we've done in the past, half an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, we're going to zero, we're going to put that zero point back and we do that by just clicking up here. Now, a lot of people uh, try to avoid InDesign, and let's talk a little bit about uh, why it's really important for you to know InDesign um, when you leave here and not to avoid it. So InDesign um, is important because, um, you know, when InDesign talks to a printer, it's like two New Yorkers having a conversation. It's fluid, it's clean, um, and it's fast. Um, if you are trying to print out of Photoshop or Illustrator, it's like a New Yorker and a Cajun having a conversation. They have different slang, they have different accents, they speak at different speeds. It's not effective. It will eventually print, but it might be three hours later, whereas InDesign, it will be instant because they speak the same language. So that's one of the reasons why you don't try to avoid, um, you don't try to avoid, uh, oh, you know what? I messed up and I didn't give myself three quarters of an inch here, but we caught it. So that's great. Um, so we should have the same seven and three quarters. So if you're doing a modular grid, a modular grid is something like, um, deciding that, and I'm going to just make up a number, right? And we'll see how it works. Um, that we are making our columns an inch and a quarter. And they're not actually columns at this point. Oops. Um, they're combined to create columns, um, but they are uh, a really amazing tool to kind of create variety. And let's see how this works out for us. We may have a weird last column. Where it might work out. I think we're going to end up with a slightly weird last column. And you can see that this column is going to be larger. So if that's the case, let's see how much larger it's going to be. So it's three quarters of an inch. Um, so what we could do is we could choose to make this a quarter of an inch. And we're going to grab all of these guys and move them over. Oops. So that they come over a quarter of an inch. And then make this slightly wider. <clears throat> and so um, that will give us our multi column. And so one of the reasons why this is really interesting is I could have a column that is um, three. Or I could have a column of text that's three, I could have, or two, I could have one that's three. Um, and so we can create some really interesting things using modular grids. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that at length uh, at another time. So this is um, kind of the basic setup of your document um, and creating what you need. 
now that we have, and I'm going to get rid of my extra parents because we're not going to use a modular grid. We're just going to use this two column. You can see that I still have these guys um, on A and everybody else on A, but I'm going to start transitioning everybody else to B because everybody else is going to be a two column spread that's an interior page. So you can see that I have A parents and I have my B parents. So um, I don't need those guides here. Um, in fact, some of those guides are going to be, you know, specific to like the design. And so I might pull guides, but I don't necessarily have specific things that I'm going to do. This interior page, we're going to have very specific things that we're going to do. So um, we're going to need that multi-column page, whereas we don't need those columns here um, uh, to support what we're going to be doing. So we're going to stop there. And the next phase of this is for us, you know, we're going to start thinking about what we're going to drop in, how we're going to handle it, and, you know, talk about some of these tools which have a huge overlap in both Illustrator and Photoshop. Both of, you, of, of those programs you should have used fairly, um, uh, you know, you've used a lot of in the first two classes um, or in this class. All right.